Hey guys, Kelvin here. Singapore Airlines posted a record loss last quarter, and they've already burned through half of the cash that they raised in a rights issue they did just two months ago. Last week, I just sold all my shares in SIA, ticker symbol C6L on SGX. So today, I just wanted to share my thoughts on why I sold SIA. In this video, I'll be sharing about my position and my trade, my initial investment thesis, why I sold my position, and how this trade affects my portfolio. I sold 500 shares of SIA on the 20th of August, which was my entire position, at the price of $3.61 per share. My average buy price was $4.51, so I'm realizing a loss of about 20% on that position. So looking at SIA share price today, it actually has risen to $3.73 since last week when I sold, which is up about 3%. When I first bought SIA back in March, I was banking on a V-shaped recovery in the stock market. Apparently that materialized, but it only happened in the US stock market. The underlying economy in Singapore and most of the world is still pretty weak and some countries were, are even looking at a second wave of infections coming. The travel and tourism industry has been hit particularly hard, especially for airlines like SIA. Almost every country in the world has closed their borders to limit travel and to limit the spread of the coronavirus infection. SIA is even more exposed because it is just a small island nation with no domestic travel market. Unlike bigger countries like China, India, or Japan. So just a brief overview of SIA as a company. It is a national airline of Singapore and considered one of the best airlines in the world and one of Singapore's most iconic brands. Besides the parent airline SIA, the SIA group also consists of other subsidiaries like Silk Air and Scoot, its engineering SIEC and its cargo unit SIA Cargo. So just a quick update on SIA's most recent earnings results released on the 29th of July 2020. The SIA group reported that passenger carriage actually fell by 99.5%. SIA explained that demand for air travel evaporated as travel restrictions and border controls were imposed around the world to contain the spread of the virus. SIA also reported a $1 billion net loss in the, just the first quarter. Taking a quick look at their profit and loss statement, this quarter SIA reported a total revenue of $851 million, down 80% since last year, and a total expenditure of close to $1.9 billion, down only 50% since last year. That resulted in an operating loss of about $1 billion, and a net loss of $1.12 billion. Take note that a huge part of that loss was due to a fuel hedging ineffectiveness loss of $464 million. So we see from the recent quarterly results that SIA's revenue went down a whole lot, but their expenses did not go down just as much. And this makes sense because although SIA is not flying most of their planes, they still have to pay for parking and storage charges of these aircraft, which can cost quite a bit. Also for their fuel hedging ineffectiveness of 464 million, that is close to one third of the total net loss for this quarter. And keep in mind that oil prices are at really low levels right now, and it's evident that SIA is not benefiting from the low prices of oil. So what made me change my mind on my original investment thesis, and why did I sell SIA? The first reason is a slower than expected recovery. Hayata projects that air travel will only return to pre-COVID levels uh, by 2024 and in the meantime, SIA has no domestic market to fall on, unlike the bigger countries like US, China and Japan. When air travel eventually returns, corporate travel is still expected to remain depressed. This is bad for SIA because SIA is highly dependent on making high margins from their premium segment, which includes uh, corporates traveling in premium economy class and business class. With many people's income being affected during this pandemic, and some maybe even losing their jobs altogether, 
I think many people will have to tighten their belts and become more price conscious if they even choose to travel in the future. So SIA may find it tough to justify charging higher fares than the competition. Another concern I have about SIA is their cash burn rate. This article from Bloomberg reported that SIA has burned through half of the $8.8 billion it raised through their share sale in just two months, even as it cut costs and grounded most of its fleet, highlighting how carriers can keep incurring expenses even when planes are left idle. Of the $4.4 billion spent since mid-June, $1.1 billion was used for operating expenses, maturing fuel hedging trades and ticket refunds from cancelled flights. About $900 million was spent to service debt and $200 million to buy aircraft. According to another article from CNA, it reports that SIA said in February that it entered fuel hedging contracts all the way until March 31st of 2025, which includes hedging 51% of its jet fuel at $78 a barrel and 22% of brand at $58 a barrel in the current financial year. That's a much higher price than what fuel is at at the moment, with jet fuel being uh, around $22 a barrel now and brand is below $30 a barrel. According to the article as well, broker UOB K Hian in March said that the airline faced $2.5 billion in mark to market hedging losses by the end of that month. So although oil prices have tanked, SIA is unable to take full advantage of the low oil prices because of all these fuel hedging contracts that they have locked in. So SIA right now is in cash conservation mode. They recently announced that they are doing a comprehensive review of their the shape and size of their network. SIA also shared that they expect an impairment on their older generation of aircraft, namely the A380 of around $1 billion. So in my opinion, I think this might result in SIA having to retire some of their A380s ahead of time. SIA also shared that they are still in negotiations with Airbus and Boeing to defer some of the aircraft they've already ordered. So in my opinion, I think this will result in SIA shrinking their network to a much smaller network and thus requiring less aircraft. SIA has implemented a pay cut across all levels of staff and have suspended their dividend indefinitely. There was no final dividend declared for the last financial year and I don't expect any dividend to be paid at least until SIA returns to profitability. So at the moment, there's quite a lot of uncertainty on how long the cash that uh, SIA raised from the rights issue will last. The government may step in again to back another liquidity raise. But for me as an investor, I'm not so sure if I want to be caught in a position of having to pump in more money into SIA in another rights issue to avoid get my getting my position diluted. But it's not all doom and gloom and there is a silver lining around the dark clouds surrounding SIA. The biggest one being strong backing from the government. The government has said that they will not allow SIA to fail and that SIA serves a strategic importance to Singapore. As a national carrier, SIA was instrumental to the government during the pandemic. SIA used their planes to fly in essential supplies as well as to evacuate Singaporeans from overseas back home. The recent budget announcements by the government also includes generous wage support schemes for industries affected by the pandemic, which includes aviation companies like SIA. So how does this affect my overall portfolio allocation? My position in SIA only made up around 1.7% of my portfolio, so it doesn't really affect my overall portfolio allocation much. My portfolio is already pretty heavy on industrials like SIA and I already have exposure to the aviation sector through SETS and ST Engineering. So to me, SIA is more of a pure play in aviation, whereas SETS and ST Engineering have a more diversified business in other industries. So with the prospects of the aviation sector looking pretty bleak and no signs of a quick recovery soon, I'm happy to reduce my exposure in the aviation sector by selling SIA. So concluding this video, 
If you're a dividend or growth investor, you should probably stay away from SIA. Its dividend has been suspended indefinitely and its growth should continue to be negative for at least the next few quarters or maybe even the next few years. However, SIA could be attractive to value investors at these prices if you're willing to hold for the long term. Buying SIA would be more of a recovery play but I do think that SIA has high chances of surviving this pandemic with strong government backing and with their recently successful rights issue. A potential catalyst I see for SIA share price would be a vaccine being approved in the major economies and if we see borders opening earlier than expected. However, that doesn't mean that SIA share price won't continue to slide. So if you're thinking of starting a position or buying more of SIA, do proceed with a lot of caution. Remember that I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. So please remember to always do your own research before you make any investment decisions based on what I've shared. SIA is a well-run company and has a strong brand. And I believe that they will be able to get through this crisis. But only if and when a recovery in air travel really comes, then I will take another hard look at SIA as an investment. So that's it from me today. If you found any value in this video, please drop it a like and share it with your friends. Drop a comment below. Uh, tell me what you think about SIA as an investment. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.